Hello there, my name is Deborah Orcock tyler and I'm going to be taking you through this Espresso Express, this quick 10 minute video. Uh, this one is going to be about keeping your trustee inf trustees informed during this really difficult time. Uh, I should just give you a little warning, if you can hear some very strange chomping noises, that's because in order to keep my dog Arthur quiet, whilst I'm trying to do this recording I've had to give him a chew, I've tried to get him to go and chew his toy in the garden but he refuses to leave my side so he sat by my feet chomping away. So those weird noises are not my tummy, they are the dog. Anyway, so this slide here just tells you a little bit about me, only because I think it's important that you know that um, I've been a chief executive for a very long time so I know um, about the importance of preparing information for your trustees but also I spent just as much time being a trustee or chair of trustees myself and I know what kind of information is really helpful for trustees to know particularly during times of crisis so that just tells you a little bit about me. So this session is about keeping your trustees informed particularly during this really challenging situation which we find ourselves right now. So by the end of this session you will understand what it is your trustees must know You'll have an understanding of how to present that information in a useful and efficient way, as useful and efficient as possibly it can be, um, given that you're probably down to a very small number of staff at the moment. And also have some ideas about the best mechanisms, the best ways of getting that information to them, of keeping them informed and updated. So how to use this session? I recommend that you have a pen and paper to hand because there may well be things that pop into your head as you're going along that you want to jot down so you don't forget. At various points, you're going to see this little slide pop up, thinking, please wait. At that point, I want you to pause the video so that you've got some time to think, to jot down notes, ideas, questions and so forth. And talking of questions, unfortunately, of course, this is a pre-recording, so you can't actually ask me any questions, but I'm more than happy to um, answer questions that you have once you finish the recording. And you can just email them to me at dorcocktyler at dsc.org.uk, or you can tweet them to me at Deb Tyler and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as I possibly can. What I want you to do now is pause the video and jot down what is it you think that your trustees need to know. And welcome back. So what do they need to know? Well, in a time of crisis like it is now, they need to know how viable the charity is right now. Trustees have a duty to make sure that the charity can pay its way, can pay its bills. And that will be a massively pressing mind. Uh, matter in their mind under normal circumstances of course what they care about is uh, you know are we meeting the service users needs or the beneficiaries or are, you know are we delivering against our cause but right now the most important thing for them is going to be is how viable is the charity what is the medium and longer term financial picture looking like so even if it looks like we're okay right now for the moment what about in the next couple of months in the, in the months coming ahead do we have any idea of what our finances are going to be and what plans have we got in place to survive this particular crisis? What is it that we are going to do to get ourselves through it? How are those plans going? Uh, are they working? Do we have any sense of how they're working? And is there anything that we need to do differently, both now and possibly in the future? Of course, they also will want to know how the beneficiaries or service users or whoever it is that you're helping are coping and what additional things we're doing to help them. Times like this, obviously some services are being cut because there's no money, but how are you prioritizing and making those decisions? And also, of course, our staff and volunteers, because none of us can do that without them and trustees really do get that. So they're gonna want to know how are staff and volunteers coping and what are we, what are you as a charity doing to help them keep them safe and well? So what I want you to do is pause and have a think about the answers to those questions. What would you be telling your trustees in answer to those questions? Okay, so moving on. The first and most important thing you need to do is make sure that the information is properly understood. I think we have a tendency to shove a whole load of like data, loads of information at trustees. And in fact, the more information you give people, often the less they actually understand. So it's really important about getting the information as clear as possible. So I think visuals, graphics and things like that is probably the most effective way to do that because then you get a, a big picture instead of getting lost down in the details of numbers. By all means, provide numbers if you need to, but if you wanna get the message understood, keep it as simple and as visual as possible. So I'll give you some examples. So if you look at the financial projection as a result of the coronavirus, as you can see here, this just shows your trustees broadly what the picture looked like in March, what it's looking like in April and May, and what it's going to be like in June. And it shows you how the pattern changes. So they can immediately see there that there's a massive downturn in income. The cash isn't too bad, but the expenditure is going up. Um, another example is, again, looking at where your income is actually coming from, showing them simple visual bar charts like this that show them that this is what you're expecting. Legacy income is going to stay up. 
um, that your events income is absolutely trashed because obviously during the virus situation, you can't run any events and what you're expecting to happen with your trusts and foundations income. As you can see, it's a very simple, quick visual picture. And then again, looking at uh, your profiles of your beneficiaries needs. So again, this is just, all of this is just made up, but it basically giving them a picture of, you know, at the moment, the biggest need of people you're serving are those between 75 to 80. And when the trustees can look at that, they're able to ask questions like, why is that the biggest profile of beneficiary? You know, has anything changed and so forth? So simple visual information will help them to understand what the big picture is. And then there's the question about how do you get it across to them effectively? Now, I think um, what's uh, pretty important about uh, this sort of thing is like keeping it really simple. This isn't business as usual. This is business as exceptional. This is business as emergency, this is business in a crisis. And that means that your traditional mechanisms and methods are probably not going to be most effective. So what I want you to do is to stop and think in your particular environment, how can you get that information to them most effectively? And welcome back. So one of the first things I recommend is you set up a, a, a board working group. So you suggest to your trustees that they organize a very small group of them, three, four people possibly, whose job it is to um, meet with you weekly via Zoom or Teams or whatever the mechanisms are, so that you can minimize the amount of paperwork you've got to produce. You're very quickly and visually able to update them about um, where things are. This picture of this lovely crew here is in fact not my trustees, actually this is my uh, senior team. Um, but I couldn't resist it because we have, as many of you probably do, a baby always appears at every meeting and that's little Ira there. Okay, so using modern technology, Zooms, meetings, things like that. Also, for those of you who have teams, I recommend using teams to kind of keep a thread of the information that's going through. Um, so setting, and you are able to set your trustees up on things like that. So it's really regular short pieces of information. It's not great long reports, it's little short updates of what's going on. I suggest that you meet weekly, possibly for about half an hour to 45 minutes, and that you have a standard agenda that doesn't really change. You'll see on this one here, you know, because, yeah, sorry, I should say that it's really important to keep um, records of what's going on, particularly during a crisis, so that if anything does get particularly difficult, particularly hard, you're able to go back and have a look at how the decisions that you came to are actually made. And this is just an example here of an agenda which shows you focusing on finance because that's the biggest crisis at the moment, getting the money in in order to provide the services to people who need them. Um, and then an update on basically what you're currently doing to get through this, and then an open agenda item. Normally, I would absolutely adamantly say do not have AOB or any open agenda space on your meeting. However, I think obviously the circumstances warrant something different and this is to make it flexible so that anything that crops up can be dealt with there. What you don't want is this. This is the point. You do not want your trustees panicking. Most of them will be worrying about their own organisations right now anyway and you do not want them to be worrying about yours more than is necessary. So you need to brief, brief, brief. You don't want them to be all these things here, confused, unsure, perplexed, disoriented, bewildered, because if they are not clear exactly where you are and what it is that you need to do, they're going to end up not knowing what decisions to take. They're going to end up paralyzed and that isn't going to help anybody. So you also need to be brief, 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 and you need to present the information briefly. What they need to know is where are you right now? What's the immediate environment looking like? And looking further ahead, even if you can't see distinctly what's coming up, you've got some sense of the mountains that you have still to climb. I just want to briefly talk about your plan and to say, this is what your plan probably looks like. You're starting from where we are right now and you're trying to get to the end, get through this, this crisis and this difficult period. But this is what will happen. You need to manage yourself, your own expectations and your trustees' expectations to say that, especially in the current environment, when things are changing so quickly and so fluidly, how you start your journey is not necessarily gonna be how you, how you end up. And you are going to hit more obstacles along the way. And the real trick is to be flexible. Calm and courageous, I think, is probably the mantra I'd suggest. So, thank you for listening. I hope it's been helpful to you. And I say to you, please stay safe and stay well. And thank you for listening. Thank you.